Can you just explain, you know, the backstory of the Gladys situation? Okay, so we've got a fold of Highland cows on top of Edgarden Hill. You can see behind me, just some of them there. Um, and Gladys was a part of that fold. Um, and we lost Gladys through dog worrying last May, May 21. Um, she was due to calve three days after she was killed, the last bank holiday in May. Um, it put myself and my family in quite a deep, terrible um, place. And we came out on the Monday and decided to do something about it. We didn't feel this is not right. And then next minute, somebody just popped up from nowhere, this chap, and said, oh, I was up here, are these, are these your cows? And I said, yes, they belong to me, but I'm a National Trust tenant, yeah. but they belong to me. Um, he said, well, just let you know, I was up here last night watching the sun go down, which a lot of folk do on top of Egger Hill, watching the sun go down. And uh, there was two dogs, two Labradors chasing your calves. And he said, I saw the two dogs chasing your cow over that hillside and down over. And of course, I went over and I saw what it was. There was a mess. Um, you can see there was bite marks and stuff. So obviously at that point I knew what had happened, that they'd been worried. Um, felt completely gutted and my heart kind of sank at the end of the day. Because um, she was due to calve two days afterwards. So as a fam family, we decided to do something about it and contacted the local MP. We put out three, sorry, four posts on Facebook. One night, woke up next morning and we had 2.25 million people share it. I mean, obviously here in a rural county here in the south of England, you know, there are lots of people with dogs, but there's also a huge amount of animals in the fields yeah. of the county. So what's your, what are you hoping that this okay. sort of regulation will bring in? Okay, so that's a good point to bring across, because we're rural and we need the tourists. You know, we need, it's a hard winter, and from Easter through to October, we need so these tourists to come down to enjoy the countryside and for our businesses to thrive from it. But we ask, for when you bring a dog into a field which has got sheep, cattle, whatever, to put your dog on a lead, please. Because that animal, that's their home. That field is what they call home. So that's what I'm trying to do at the moment, is bring a law in that actually makes it compulsory for dogs to be kept on leads or when you're in a field of cows, to be kept close by at heel. So in Scotland, actually, this is a whole grey area that we've got. So England is exactly the same. We do, you, by law, you should have your dog on lead or under control. Scotland have got it. They've got a 10,000 pound fine or six months imprisonment. In England, it's a thousand pound fine. And I know a thousand pound is a lot of money and especially what's going on at the moment, the economy, it's a lot of money. But actually, it's not enough. The fine's not enough. We should be, with the Scots, £10,000. But I mean, obviously, cattle are, are, are expensive to keep. The fine, you feel, is realistic, is that right? Yeah, I believe it is. I mean, you, you try and replace an animal like this. This is a six-year-old cow I've got sat here, or stood here. To me, for going to replace this cow is £2,500. That's before I start. So Gladys was worth about £2,000. And then she was only a young cow. So she still had another six, seven carvings inside her which is worth five, six hundred quid at least each calf. So, you know, financially, it's a massive loss, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's an animal that I've reared and I, it should never happen. Dogs should never have been running riot on top of Edgarden Hill. And um, yeah, I mean, our Highland cows are like a part of the family. You know, we look after them, we love them, we care for them. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and to lose her and was just awful. You know, it's like losing a part of the family. Getting back to today, you're here at a, 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 a country agricultural show, or here on the uh, Dorset Devon sort of border. Um, what sort of day have you had today? Okay, so <laughs> our day started at five o'clock. So we've had a fantastic day down here. Uh, it was our first time ever showing these guys. Eight days ago, these guys were in a field. Well, actually, nine days they were in a field. Never seen a halter. Um, and they were my friends here, Patrick and Darlene, we got them down and we started uh, halter training them twice a day. And this is what we got. And today we've got a first and some seconds. So we've had a fantastic day, but for me, it's all actually all about getting across the dog we're in and getting across the breed. 
it's getting across the breeds. The native breeds to me is really important. That's what it's all about. I'm talking to you about Gladys Law and what we do. Yeah. How far advanced is the Gladys Law at the moment? I mean, is there, do you think there's a likelihood that it's going to change? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've got Chris Loader involved, uh, Victoria Prentice and George Eustace. So we've knocked on quite a few doors who've actually heard, and they actually approached me, um, which is like fantastic. So we've had three readings. They've gone through Parliament already. We're now at the House of Lords. Um, things are now in place. The bill cannot be changed. What we are trying, hopefully, is they'll make the penalty harder. That's what we're kind of hoping for right now. We should, touch wood, maybe have this wrapped up by Christmas and rubber stamp by next May. So it's, a, it's, it's real. You know, we've got 33.8 million people we've reached out to and who are supporting us. So it's real.